This is the first face-to-face -face confrontation between top-level diplomats from Russia and Georgia since the bloody conflict started a month ago. On the left, Russia's ambassador to the European Union, Vladimir Shizov. And on the right, Georgian minister to Muri, Yakubashvili. Our conclusion is that it was not possible to avoid it, and we just tried to defend our country as much as we could before the Europe or the United States or the West or the East start to understand that there is something nasty happening in the Caucasus. The use of force was minimal in the circumstances and it allowed to save lives uh, of uh, people in South Ossetia and in Abkhazia. This verbal fight takes place in Brussels. Only a few hours before the leaders of the 27 EU member states start their emergency summit. They are here to discuss Georgia and relations with Russia. In this war zone, no bombs and bullets, but words and different views on the events that took place. Georgia argues that Russia has been preparing its move into South Ossetia for years already. For instance, by issuing Russian passports to the people here. These are real passports. Don't think that these are fake passports. Here you have personalities. The only difference is that these people have no idea that they are Russian citizens. It's not true. <laughs> so, for some of the EU countries that joined the Union only in 2004, the events in Georgia have woken up ghosts from the past. Poland was among those that requested this summit. The holidays from history have ended. Karl Marx said that uh, historical events usually happen twice. First is a drama. Second is a farce. I think it's not too late to avoid the farce. The French presidency of the European Union seeks to balance the sensitivities and to unite the EU member states on two questions. What can Europe do to help Georgia? And what should be the consequences for Europe's relations with Russia? Keeping in mind that Russia is a key supplier of natural gas to much of Europe. La meilleure réponse à ceux qui me disent qu'on est trop dépendant du pétrole et du gaz russe, Eh bien, c'est faire un effort en matière d'économie d'énergie, c'est diversifier les sources d'énergie qui sont pas simplement des diversifications géographiques, mais c'est aussi l'énergie renouvelable et nucléaire. Et enfin, de ne pas laisser tomber la question institutionnelle, le problème irlandais, parce que la crise montre que l'Europe a besoin d'institutions fortes et stables. The EU, in the end, proves to be prepared to send a police mission to Georgia to monitor the situation on the ground. And Russia is ready to allow these officers into its buffer zones with South Ossetia and Abkhazia. We are prepared to discuss uh, an international police mission uh, in the buffer zone. Yes. And we will uh, be looking forward to discussing this with our EU partners. When it comes to relations with Russia, European diplomats said the Union agrees on what it calls a close observation of mutual relations. These observations are then to be evaluated at the time of the EU-Russia summit that is scheduled to take place in Nice in the middle of November. For Georgia, meanwhile, it's clear that it has to pay a diplomatic price for letting itself be tempted to open fire on Russian troops last month. That mistake now makes it more difficult for the EU to fully and unconditionally condemn Russia's actions. Raymond Franken at EOX-TV in Brussels.